In the 1970s, the Oakland Athletics relied on pitching and power to overcome the Big Red Machine. The Swing and A's captured their first World Series title in seven games. Three decades later, the A's are employing similar methods. Last night, Mark Mulder supplied the strong arm tactics while Scott Hatterberg provided the power. It is. Oh, did he ever? Down the line and gone! Oh, oh, a grand slam! Can Barry Zito and friends follow a familiar formula tonight? The A's take on the Reds next. We've got another beautiful night for a ball game here in Oakland, California, as the Oakland A's red hot with six wins and seven starts on this homestand take on the Cincinnati Reds. Hi, everybody. Hank Greenwald with Ray Fossey. And tonight, uh, Ray will talk a little bit about ballparks where ball carries well, it doesn't carry well. Last night, it carried well. And especially the way the A's hit the ball last night, I don't care where they would have been playing, the four home runs hit would have gone out of any ballpark. And it all started in the first inning with Mark Kotze. As he had a two-run home run to straightaway center. What was interesting, three of the four were two-run home runs, but this one was a big one, a grand slam by Scott Hatterberg. It was huge coming with two outs after Corey Lotto had struck out a couple of batters in a Rubio Durazo outside breaking ball. He had been hit on the leg. He could barely make it around the bases. And then Damian Miller, a two-run shot deep to left field. He has now hit three fastballs on the inside part of the plate. 71 home runs total for the Athletics that they have hit. The best statistic, the A's pitchers have given up only 48 all season. A nice differential for the ball club. Well, brace yourself, fans. The big white machine is about to take the field against Ken Griffey Jr. and Barry Zito. Coming up next. A's baseball is brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. By Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Cold down easy. By McDonald's. Treat yourself to a cool dessert like an Oreo McFlurry or new cookies and cream Dippin' Dots only at McDonald's. And by Toyota. Kick another four doors to the curb. Introducing the 2004 Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Well, let's take a look at the Reds lineup tonight. It's brought to you by McDonald's. And the Reds will throw this assortment against Barry Zito this evening. Ryan Creel will lead it off with Barry Larkin second. Sean Casey at first base. Ken Griffey Jr. in center. D'Angelo Jimenez, second baseman. Adam Dunn, the DH. Willie Mopaney in right field. Jason LaRue behind the plate. And Tim Hummel at third base. And Barry Zito looking for a little Mark Mulder run support. As Mulder has been getting all the runs lately. Barry Zito last two starts has been outstanding. 16 innings total, he's given up just one run, but he's only got one run support. And as a result, a couple of no decisions for the A's lefty. Defeated the Cincinnati Reds in Cincinnati in 2002. The A's won by a score of 10 to 3 with Barry pitching. Now the pitch to Friel, and that's in there for a strike. One and one the count. Tim McClellan is behind the plate tonight with Tony Randazzo at first, fielding. Cuthbert at second, and Jim Wolf, the umpire at third. The 1 1 pitch. Good changeup by Zeno. Well, as Barry has done the last couple of starts, he established all three pitches early in the game. You see the sun and the shadow in right field. Burns, he's got it. So he can handle it. Doesn't need sunglasses. It's a low enough sun. Zeno started to his delivery and uh, thought better of it. Some reason. Well, the hitter backed out. He stepped out of the batter's box. I guess it has time, reason. and uh, Tim McClellan allowed him to take the time. Now the one-two pitch on the way, and that is over the low. Two balls, two strikes. Friel has hit five career home runs, but he's picked some pretty good pitchers: Randy Johnson, Billy Wagner, and Greg Maddox. Zito throws and another change up and a strikeout to start the game. Take a look at the A's defense brought to you by Rico. Eric Burns in right field tonight. And of course, Burnsy, second start in right field this season. Last night he played all three positions Kelty in left, Kotze in center, Herman Crosby, Scudero, Hatterberg, third to first, Amy Miller behind the plate. It is a day off for Mark McLemore. Jermaine Dye is the designated hitter, so he's off his feet for defensive purposes. And Maka, of course, uh, 
those at this time of the year, third of the season passed, just one game passed, and uh, start giving the guys a little bit of rest. Now here's the 11-time All-Star Barry Larkin at the plate, and he shows why. Ripping that one past Dermont at third. So the first hit of the ball game puts Larkin in first base. And we'll bring to the plate first baseman Sean Casey. Casey, a home run last night off of Mark Mulder curveball. A couple of years ago off of uh, Barry Zito had a low fastball for a home run. Barry giving up three runs in his start against the, the Reds in seven innings. Casey's second in the National League batting race uh, to uh, Barry Bonds of the Giants. Casey's the kind of guy who was very detailing, uh, can hit for average, hit for power. Can't stand still, though. <laughs> <laughs> Always lifts his back leg. And at least he knows how to hit. Wide open stance and covers a lot of the play. Real at first base, and that one is hit just foul. Check that out. Locking the ball, going down, even down on the bullpen. It'll let that one get through. <laughs> well, the A's unleashed quite an attack here last night and chalking up 13 runs. Put on a pretty good show for the home folks. Larkin at first, and this one is hit wide at third and past the diving uh, Airmon. So the Reds mount a threat here early. Well, not too many fastballs are going to go by a National League hitter as, as he seems, and we have seen it already. Barry Larkin jumping on the first fastball, and John Casey on a 1-1 fastball. He was ready for it. And you know the guy stepping to the plate now is going to be swinging. Well, the table is set for Ken Griffey Jr., two home runs shy of the 500 mark for his major league career. thinking this would be as good a time as any to uh, launch one. As you see Larkin leading off second. And this one is bounced wide at first. I like to see one of the ground balls put in play at somebody. Try to get a double play to get out of the inning. Very more of a fly ball pitcher. This inning though, some hard hit ground balls. Zito, who had that spell of uh, home runitis early in the season, uh, seemed to have gotten a grip on it, but uh, you're facing a guy like Griffey. It may not matter. He's a pretty good hitter. Which is in the dirt, blocked nicely by Miller. One ball, one strike. And as you mentioned, the three starts, Anaheim, New York, and New York. He gave up eight home runs. Five starts since then, only one, and that was Mike Sweeney. Keep it in the park, keep it on the ground. Right. <laughs> Hope it's hit at somebody. He's a one of a shift on to the right side. Little bluff towards second base. Crosby almost up the middle. Scudero and Hatterberg shifted far to the right. Whether Griffey will be thinking left field or left center, he just uh, swing hard. Swing <laughs> hard. That's right. Here's oh, again another look back to second and a throw this time. <laughs> <laughs> Some fan, see all that? Hey, Zito, he's 40 years old. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> A little tough when you can pick up individuals in the crowd. Griffey with a high fastball that time. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. How often we've talked about the fact that the hitter's eyes light up when he sees the ball is up. Uh, Griffey, an outstanding low ball hitter, and this one a little bit higher than the low one that he's accustomed to hitting. But he recognized fastball and swung under. Just couldn't elevate, as they say. Larkin at second, Casey at first, one out. And the pitch. And this one is hit hard in the right field to base hit. Larkin around third will come to the plate. And the throw goes back into second base. 
And the Reds are on the board, leading one to nothing. So RBI for Junior Griffey. Uh, Damian Miller set up outside. Another fastball. This one about belt high. And Griffey, great extension. They wanted it up again, not quite up where the previous pitch had been thrown. So with, again with runners at first and second, one out. We'll take a look at uh, D'Angelo Jimenez, second baseman of the Cincinnati Reds, who uh, helped win a ball game for them on Sunday. The game at home with a single in the bottom of the ninth. Is high for a ball. After striking out Friel on a couple of good change-ups, uh, it's been mostly fastballs and a couple of curves since then. So maybe the right-hander coming up, and Jimenez, that uh, maybe go back to change-up, trying to get him to roll over on one. And a strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. With Tim McClellan, you just have to be patient. <laughs> Tim goes down to one knee and Unless you can hear him. That seven second delay yeah. in his uh, calls. Now the 1 1 pitch. And that's back to the screen. Ball and two strikes. And Griffey and Pop and Mom are here. We've gotten here a little earlier. They'd have seen Junior drive in a run. One two pitch. And that is low two and two. Reds a game in front in the National League's Central Division. It should uh, have pretty interesting race this year. Some clubs all of them capable, uh, perhaps with the exception of the Pirates, and they're only six games below 500, but all of them pretty much uh, able to make a race out of it. If you look at the Cardinals. Houston, the Cubs, the Milwaukee playing at the 500, so the only team under 500 in the uh, division is the Pirates. And they'll be in this weekend, but very tight at the top. The A's will see the Cardinals next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then the Cubs next weekend, a week from this weekend. Three balls, two strikes. Let's see if Miley starts the runners with one out. And they don't. And that is a called strike three. So Jimenez caught looking. He was frozen. And not much he was going to do with the changeup. Froze him. And uh, excellent pitch by Barry Zito. And Victor Martinez in Cleveland with the bases loaded. Got the changeup from Barry. Struck him out also. Remember that? Yeah. What a score. What a uh, moment that was. Now here's Adam Dunn. A tough out right here. And pitch is low for a ball. Reds will be without the services of Austin Kearns for a while. Right field. It's on the DL. The thumb injury. Second time this year he's been on the DL. Pitch to Dunn, and that's low inside. Two balls, no strikes. And 17 home runs so far this year. He's knocked in 38 runs. Casey at second, Griffey at first. Two out. And that is high. 3 0. Oh. A couple of lefties have hit Barry Zito. He's had success against two of the three righties he's faced, striking out Friel and Jimenez on changeups. Say he's pitching carefully to Don and wanted to face Pena in the on deck circle, but may end up doing it. And he gets a strike in there. Three and one. Out of the last ten games, the A's starting pitchers produced an earned run average of 1.93. Uh, being threatened uh, right now with the presence of two Reds on the bases and a run in. And Dunn pops one high in the air. Left center field. Kotze says he'll take care of it. And that's it for the Reds. They pick up a run on three hits after half an inning. The Reds won. The A's coming to bat.
Reds one, A's coming to bat here in the bottom of the first. The A's lineup is brought to you by Chevy, and here's how they'll square off tonight. Eric Burns in right field, Mark Kotze in center, Bobby Kelty in left. Jermaine Dye, the DH tonight. Scott Hatterberg at first, Bobby Crosby immediately the shortstop. Damian Miller will catch, Marco Scudero at second base, and Esteban Nermont at third. And June Vong is going to be starting for the Cincinnati Reds tonight. This will be... Uh, 11 start, of course, first at the major league level. Those are his triple-A numbers at Louisville, 4-4. Four and four. He did face the A's last year as a member of the Atlanta Braves. He made a game-winning home run to Jermaine Dye in the 12th inning here at the Coliseum. So the A's have seen him. It's just a question whether they remember what he threw last year. So Eric Byrne steps in, and the first pitch from Bong is outside for a ball. June Kun Wong. And he rings a bell. Pitch is taken <laughs> high. Two balls, no strikes. See the bong part? And the delivery to Burns, and that's in there for a strike. And that's about the top end of the fastball, 88 to 90 miles per hour. Two and four seam fastball, change up. And a breaking ball. Three balls, one strike to Burns. Hitting 305. Five homers. Burns has kind of enjoyed interleague play to the extent that he's hit 360. All the interleague games he has participated in, and he drives one to left field. And coming on fast, and with a dive. And did he make the catch? He did. Ryan Friel. You know, they uh, talk about Friel kind of like uh, we talk about Eric Burns. And ball hit. Got to get your hands of Eric Burns. Friel, a great jump. And he'll run into walls like Eric Burns. And not afraid to get the uniform dirty. Also like Burns. Throwback type players. Like to see. Here's Mark Kotze. Drove one out of here last night. And he hits one past the backhand of Mark and he threw into left field. We were uh, all saddened today by the loss of a member of the A's family, Nancy Stevens, the wife of our beloved colleague Bill King. Nancy had been ill for some time. We often hear the expression, he was a man's man. Well, Nancy was a man's woman. She could be one of the guys while at the same time never being thought of as anything but a lady. We will miss her, and our thoughts and prayers tonight are with her and, of course, with Bill King. Now with Katze at first, here's Bobby Kelty, and the first pitch taken for a strike. Nancy was a great baseball fan. She loved the game. She listened while the A's were on the road. Of course, uh, a lot of times in the booth next to us, sitting behind while Bill was broadcasting. Kelty drives one to third, grabbed by Hummel, the second for one, through the first wide of the mark. So Kotze forced at second, 5-4, two out, and Kelty becomes a base runner. Good hustle by Kotze, and that forced second baseman Jimenez to uh, Hurry his throw and could not get a lot on it. Oh, Looked like it could have been an Jeremy easy Jeremy. double play, but watch Kotze. There's the difference right there. And Jimenez having to leave his feet and obviously could not get a lot on the throw because of it. And you never know what can happen when you hustle in a second and keep a double play from being turned. Jermaine Dye in the uh, somewhat unfamiliar role of a DH here tonight. Keldy at first, one nothing Reds. We're in the bottom of the first, and Long starts him out with a strike. Still getting used to the look of the Cincinnati Reds playing here. That one is a little high for a ball. 
does have that inclination to think. Is this a spring training game? Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, last night it seemed like one with all the substitutions after the A's jumped off to an early lead. One and one the count. Snap throw. Last season with the Braves, uh, Ball went 5 0, won his first five decisions. Uh, the Atlanta Ball Club. Die drives one hard. Underneath the glove with the third baseman humble and in the left field. Mike Humble didn't quite go down. No, it's just. <laughs> It's like Larkin on Katze's ball. For some reason, not able to fully bend over to pick up the ball. Looked like it was playable. Just a little bit to his left and just missed it. Well, you try that with a runner at uh, second or third. Yeah. <laughs> and that's an error on third baseman Hummel. And yeah, that's a good call. Should have had it. So E5 goes down in the book, and here is Scott Hatterberg. And he watches a pitch high for a ball. Well, Hatterberg's been swinging the bat. If you're the Cincinnati Reds looking forward, you're probably to being back in the dugout where they put out at third base. Instead, Scott Hatterberg, the hottest hitter on the team. Last night, five runs batted in, two outs, including the grand slam. Up in the middle, base hit. Keldy coming around. Griffey will not throw home, and this game is tied up. Well, as I just said, they probably had hoped to get the third out. Scott Hatterberg, stay high. Right back up the middle against the lefty. Fastball, and boy, he just cleared. Open up his hip. Watch the hips open up, and the bat able to extend, even though the ball a little bit in, but still great extension. And right back up the middle for a solid base hit and another run batted in with two outs. Well, two examples of keeping that uh, inning alive. Uh, yep. Katze going into second base, uh, forcing a weak throw, enabling uh, Keldy to reach, and then uh, Die reaching on a sort of an indifferent attempt to field that ball by Hummel at third. Now here's Crosby, and he looks at a strike. Well, you love to see a team take advantage Absolutely. of the other team's mistakes. Barry Zito now sees a tie game. And Crosby sees a pitch high and outside. One ball, one strike. Well, Barry already has gotten the same amount of runs that he got in the last two starts. A total of 16 innings. He's gotten one in the first. And he'd love to get a few more. Have a little breathing room in his pitching so that every pitch is not critical for him. Die off second, Hatterberg off first, and that was tapped foul. Giants went into Tampa Bay. Into the, what is that again? That Tropicana, Tropicana Field. Tropicana Field. Dome. Dome. <laughs> Seemed to like it, they did. They won 7-3. Yeah. Listen to one report. The uh, good friend Wayne Kuyper and Mike Kruko, and they said they arrived at 1.30 this morning. 1.35, they realized they were happy. They didn't have to go there. From 1992 That's to present. <laughs> <laughs> almost there. Yeah, they were almost the Tampa Bay Giants. Interesting play in that game, and I forget who it was at first base uh, for the Giants, and there was a pitch that he was running on the pitch, and the pitch was ball four. It was Grissom, might have been Grissom. He went all the way to third. Nobody bothered. The third baseman stayed deep. <laughs> Not recall that I'd ever seen that before. Crosby takes the pitch high, and the count is three and two. You know, Willie Mays has been playing. Sure. <laughs> he would have thought nothing yeah. of it. <laughs> Interesting, you get these scores right now, and you can't say, well, in the uh, National League, you know, or the American League. Three balls, two strikes. Crosby trying to keep this inning alive. Runners go. And Crosby fouls it off to the right. Ten innings at Detroit uh, tonight, and the Atlanta Braves emerged a winner, four to three. Randy Johnson went into Baltimore. d backs won that one, eight to one. Johnson's eighth win of the year. And Toronto beat the Dodgers, seven to one. 
die. The runner at second base. Ready to take off again along with Hatterberg. And Crosby drives this one in the air down the right field line. And it can't be caught. Well, Crosby's getting a steady diet of fastballs on the outside part of the plate. And trying to hit the ball on the line. Fouled a couple off, but almost have to think outside, think away, and adjust inside if the pitch comes in to try to fight it off. Bobby Crosby, number seven, hitting sixth. Seven pitches already in this at bat. Fouled off a couple after two strikes. So we'll try it again on 3 2. And Crosby draws a walk. Well, uh, Bobby Crosby took a change up like he knew it was coming, and that was an outstanding at bat. To walk on Bong's changeup, that was after a couple of fastballs. And hey, Miley has to be thinking back to Jermaine Dyer's ground ball. David Miller last night with a fastball in from Joe Valentine. And as he has done twice already, I think now three times, a fastball in just turned on it. They told us last night at the postgame interview. Just reacts on a fastball in, and he can hit it. He's very strong. He loves one right here. And that's called a strike. I'll tell you on that ball four pitch. I was watching Tim McClellan and came out of his crouch and I wasn't sure what he was going to do. <laughs> there was a long pause there, folks. <laughs> I just didn't trust myself to say ball four <laughs> maybe until Crosby reached first base. Let's see that pitch to Crosby. But I thought it's clearly low. It's a change up in the way Crosby took it. And that's I wasn't worried about the pitch. Yeah, I was worried about McClellan coming out of that crouch with, with the, the hand. Yeah, yeah, his hand was up. You're right. Well, he's been rated as the best ball strike umpire. One ball, one strike to count. Hit down the right field line, and that is a fair ball. Die scores. Hatterberg scores. They're waving Crosby to the plate. Here comes the throw, and Crosby is safe. Dropped the ball. Ball was dropped by the catcher, LaRue. A three-run double for Damian Miller, and it is now 4-1 to one Oakland. All coming after two outs, all coming after a die. A die Arba air, the third baseman, Hubble, and another great approach by an A's hitter. Change up away to Damian Miller. And I think Brad Fisher thought he was Ron Washington. He just keeps waving his arms. And if LaRue comes up with a ball, but he looked up. As Bobby Crosby was coming in, watched the head come up, and just enough for him not able to come up with the ball. And Crosby scored the third run on the double by Damian Miller. Marco Scudero, the hitter, and he takes a pitch that is low for a ball. Damian Miller, six RBIs in uh, one game plus, if you will. But just again, outstanding approach by the A's hitter. Something that Dave Hudgens continues to preach. Take the pitch away, go to the opposite field, and that's what they've done. And a strike to Scooter on. One and one. Had quite a game in Boston tonight. It was scoreless till the bottom of the seventh when the Red Sox finally got a run and beat San Diego one to nothing. Pedro got the win. a great number there. Ten first inning runs the last three games. Oh, well, we mentioned Brad Fisher acting like Ron Washington. That's because he is coaching third today. He is normally over at first base, but Ron Washington had to go home to take care of some family business. And Chris Byer, you know, bench coach, there he is. is at first base tonight. Ron will rejoin the club in St. Louis next Tuesday. Now the pitch. And that one's hit to right field, and another base hit. And they're going to wave Miller as the throw comes well up the line. Another run is in. <laughs> that was supposed to be a stop sign, Damian. <laughs> Brad Fisher put up the stop sign, and Damian Miller just kept running. But another good hit. Opposite field, Pena came up with a strong throw, but too far up the line, and 
Damien just went around him. Watch this. Head down. Look up. Look up. Where's Fish? Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, LaRue didn't want the bat to get in the way, and of course, the throw up the line had to quickly reach with not the ball in his glove. <laughs> wow. I love that play, don't you? Now, here's Aramon, ninth man to come to bat here in the inning. What a way to start out a ball game. Well, of course, all these runs unearned. Take them, though, every one of them. Earned by the A's, but yeah. not charged. <laughs> As such, to Bong. And a strike. 0 and 1. And for the second night in a row, the A's are uh, putting a hurt on the Reds' pitchers. Last night, Corey Lytle said that was as bad a command as I've had it in probably in three years. Breaking ball in nicely for a strike. I wonder if uh, Barry Zito thinks he's not actually starting tonight. <laughs> Could this really be his game? Well, we'll know if Mulder comes out. <laughs> Five <laughs> runs in the second inning. inning to pitch. And Mulder <laughs> saying, I'll see Barry. He'll get some runs too. Oh, and to the count. And Herman started to go and no since first base umpire Tony Rendazzo. Well, to match the number on uh, Bong's back, he has thrown 31 pitches here in the first inning. Corey Lotto, 36 in his first inning last night, but Bong should have been back in the uh, dugout five hitters ago. Barry will take the run support, though. One two pitch. On back to the round. And that'll close out the A's, but not before. Five runs go up on the scoreboard. We've played one, A's five, Reds one. Well, the A's leading five to one. Take a look at tonight's Mercedes keys of the game, and number one has already been good. No more zeros for Barry. Of course, a run support already restrained the Red Menace. The lefties, Casey and Junior, and unfamiliarity breeds contempt. All right. Okay, I David. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Little twist. Yeah. Ball and no strikes to yeah. Willie Mopena. They, that means they like to play the National League teams. Great interleague record. They've now won 76 games, lost 47. And that is the best record in the major leagues in interleague play. Nito misses with his first two offerings to Willie Mopena. A big swing at 2-0, fouling him straight back. How about the Marlins came up with three on the top of the ninth and uh, beat Cleveland tonight, seven to five. A couple of the home runs in the ninth inning of that game by Miguel Cabrera and Damian Easley. Pena pops one up. Uh, Ray Fossey, you under this one? No, nope, didn't quite get back here. Good. <laughs> Bullpen was responsible for so many of their losses tonight. Both those home runs came off Jose Jimenez wow. in the ninth. So reared its ugly head again. 2-2 two -two pitch. Oh, change up. <laughs> Did you see him try to measure that? Oh, 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 oh. Pena, you could just see him. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> and he couldn't. Uncle Charlie, and this is a good one. And plant of the foot and stop and oh. start to swing again. And look at that. <laughs> That's the uh, Zito Mosquito. It yeah. just uh, swoops down and stings you. <laughs> wow. What a great curveball. So that was a curve. We don't see those very much in the National League. Jason LaRue, the batter, and he looks at a strike. <laughs> that whole thing looked like it was wow. in slow motion, even when <laughs> we watched it <laughs> <laughs> happen. slips inside. Take a look at this. Here's a guy getting like he's getting ready to chop wood here. Well, he plants, he strides, and he starts to swing, starts to hold up, and then I better start again. <laughs> what a great curve. Two balls and a strike now to LaRue. Yeah, I, boy, I, you know, where'd that come from? It's 
Two and two the count. I mentioned the run support for Barry Zito. <laughs> 52 and four with four plus runs per game. I guess you can take your chances, huh? That is uh, taking advantage and uh, appreciating the support when he gets it. Well struck ball in the left field. Kelty over to grab it, pulled it to a single. So LaRue becomes a base runner with one out here in the second inning. That is the fourth hit off Barry Zito. And Tim Hummel, the third baseman, steps in. The batter number 60, Tim Hummel, third base. Hummel, a little over a month ago, was playing in Louisville, the Reds AAA Farm Club, located about 100 miles uh, from Cincinnati. They have a big following down there in Kentucky, the Reds do. Back to Cincinnati Airport is located in Kentucky. Damian Miller. Three RBIs in that first inning for the A's. And that one comes in high for a ball. One ball, one strike. to have some tough towns over the river. That side of the old Ohio River, Kentucky side. Rue the runner at first, and that one is high for a ball. Oh, came into the game, played a little first base last night. Uh, tonight he's playing very little third base <laughs> from what we've seen so far, but uh, we'll get the hang of it. It's not the easiest position to play. <laughs> To the pitch up and away to Hummel. Miller actually pointed to his left shoulder, and that's an indication that Barry's flying open too much. And Barry called him out, had a little discussion, maybe the pitch selection. And of course, change up in a curve will force the hitter or the pitcher to follow through a little bit more. Looks like this might be a change up here. Well hit left field indeed. Way back, and it is off the wall. Heading for third is LaRue, and into second with a double is Hummel. Looked like Kotze took it off the wall after Keldy had gone all the way back to the fence. But it was a change up, and got to have the bat speed for Hummel. Almost got it out, but Keldy just could not jump high enough just above the, the sign and get back up by Mark Kotze. Well, that's going to bring Kurt Young to the mound. Check on Zito and make sure he's okay. Reds for the second inning in a row now threatening. Uh, they picked up a run in the first inning and had two men on base. When Zito settled down and got Jimenez on strikes and done on a fly ball to center field. So there's your runner at third base, LaRue, and at second base is Hummel. Big point of the game last night. Similar situation. The A's had a two to one lead at the time. And Mark Mulder. Second and third, nobody out. They able to get out of the inning without allowing another run to score. Now here's Friel who struck out his first time up. And he lifts one. Headed toward the seats and just hit on top of the dugout, I think, or right near there. Scott Hanover giving it a pretty good look. Oh, and one to count. Spot here where if you're Zito, you'd love to get a strike out. Maybe a pop up to the infield. Oh, one pitch. Oh, and wow. What was that? A cross up. <laughs> <laughs> we better talk about this. Yeah, one. Damian Miller was looking for a fastball and got a curveball. Unfortunately, it hit him someplace to keep it from going past him. Fastball in, curveball. He got swatted it, got his glove on it. That's a great job of <laughs> avoiding getting hit someplace where it hurts and <laughs> catching the, the, the ball. He's getting a glove on it. A little self-preservation right there on the part of Damian Miller. Second sign now, guys. Come on. <laughs> One ball, two strikes, one out. Runners at second and third. A's leading five to one. 
and a curve to Friel, and that's rolled foul. Well, we've seen a little bit of everything yeah. here in the early stages of this one. It's called interleague play. Strange things always seem to happen. And the one two pitch on the way. And that's a little high for a ball. Two and two. I struck him out on a two two change up at the first inning. And Friel way out in front actually missed a couple of change ups from Barry. Little number out in front of the plate. Zito looks the runner at third and. Got the throw to Hatterberg for the out. What a great pitch. Another good curveball from Zito. And big swing by Frill and just barely got his bat on it. Off the end of the bat and just hit perfectly. Oh, Zito feeling there. like a bunt. Looked the runner back to third and quick turn to first base with a throw. Big, big out. Well, you could do a whole highlight reel on the throws taken by a first baseman, mm -hmm. watching him oh, yeah. going to his left, going to his right, jumping, doing everything. Now Larkin takes a pitch high for a ball. You know, they say playing first is easy, but <laughs> you do have so many different types of throws coming at you and sinkers and different arm angles from guys across the diamond. Here's the 1 0 pitch, and Larkin lays off. Two balls and a strike. Here's a guy when he reaches the end, you hope he, the last team he plays for is the Reds. His whole career with them. That is rare. You just don't see that very much. Two balls, no strikes. Five to one, Oakland. Reds got a run in the first. If you're just joining us, the A's answered back with five of their own. LaRue at third and Hummel at second with two out. And Larkin going the opposite way. I guess if I were living over on this side of the bay and I didn't get to many games the other side of the bay, I'd uh, be kind of curious to see what some of these teams mm -hmm. look like in the other league. Well, especially with Griffey going for 500. Yeah. I mean, you don't get a chance to see many players there have not been that many to hit 500. As we said last night, we hope Griffey does it once he leaves town. Two one pitch, and that is slipped in nicely by Zito. Evens the count of two and two. And in the outside corner with a fastball, Larkin, look at the swing. He's thinking fastball opens up. And starts, pulls back. Pretty good pitch by Zito. Staying to the outside part of the plate. Zito trying to work himself out of trouble here. And the 2 2 pitch. And that one is going to be gone. A home run. Barry Larkin. Well, fasten the seatbelts, folks. We're in for one. <laughs> At this rate, a three-run homer for Larkin, and suddenly it's a five-to-four game. All fastballs until he got the curveball. Of course, Barry's thrown a good one, good one tonight, but uh, a very aggressive swing and on two strikes and extension. Full swing, and Larkin knew he got it. So did Bobby Kelty. Well, that clears the bases. Not exactly the way that Zito had uh, hoped. And Sean Casey looks at a strike. Larkin's not the kind of guy you think of as a home run hitter, but when he gets his pitch, uh, he knows what to do with it. So 
this one tightens up in a uh, in a big hurry. Larkin had 190 career homers coming into this season. He's boosted that total to uh, 194. Two balls, one strike. Five, four, A's. We're in the top of the second inning. Barry Zito, eight innings in each of the last two starts, and of course, because he's kept the pitch count down, he's been able to do that, but already this is pitch number 53 for Barry, and we're just in the second inning. Right. Two balls, two strikes. Say five to four, bottom of the second, though. No, we're not at Texas. We're not in Denver. Foul to the screen. Count remains two and two. He's bench looking on. See Tim Hudson there, Kiros, among others. Ground ball. <laughs> right through between Hatterberg and Scudero. Boy, that threaded the, the needle, as they say. I think this might have been a case where it's a second baseman's ball. Hatterberg off the line quite a ways, but see how far it went to his right. And once he went for it, pulled the glove back and missed it, Scudero might have been instructed by Hatterberg. Looked like he was ready to ridden down and catch it, but lost it. Well, that keeps the inning alive and enables Ken Griffey Jr. to come to the plate for the second time tonight. Drove in a run with a base hit in the first inning. Got a man on here, and he takes a pitch out and away. Seven hits given up by Barry Zito so far. Griffey family looking on. And that one misses, barely, for a ball. 2-0. and Well, sitting on a hitter's count right now. And <laughs> he's, he's playing. He's uh, set up for Griffey, playing deep. He's very deep. And with Griffey's credit, he laid off that pitch. Zito so tried to tempt him with a... High fastball, and we're getting activity early in the A's bullpen as Chris Hammond starts to loosen up. Well, don't think for a moment that Griffey uh, will not swing 3-0 if he gets his pitch. But he didn't get the one he wanted. He takes it. It's a strike, 3-1. I don't know if Kurt Young and Ken Mock have seen something with uh, Barry Zito, but we'll correct the count. It's uh, two balls, two strikes, not three and one, as I mentioned a moment ago. Runner at first. Griffey shift, of course, is on. And that one misses. Three and two. There's the shift. Runner first base, they're able to put Crosby to the right of second base. Scudero playing in shallow right field. So the runner from first is going as Griffey pulls one foul. Scudero playing the uh, exaggerated Ronnie Belliard. Uh, yeah. Second base. <laughs> Even Belliard didn't play out there. If he gets a ground ball, he better charge it because Griffey can <laughs> run. So it's not yeah. like he can wait for the ball to get to him. Got to have a strong arm guy playing second base. Again, the 3 2 pitch. And Griffey to left field this time. It's going to stay in the ballpark. And when it comes down, Bobby Keldy puts it away. Inning finally comes to an end, but not before the Reds tighten it up. It's 5 4 Oakland.
Well, to follow the Cincinnati Reds and Pittsburgh Pirates in town for the weekend, and on this Saturday against the Pirates at 105, it'll be Oakland Tribune Family Pack, four Plaza Level Outfield tickets, four hot dogs, four bags of chips, four sodas, all for just $30. Get coupons in Oakland Tribune. Bring them to the A's box office. Same guy who led off the first inning for the A's leads off the second inning. What did you say about spring training? <laughs> That's all the earmarks of a spring training game. Burns looks at a pitch that's in for a strike, one and one. Burns line to left his first time up, a diving catch by Ryan Friel. And that's inside for a ball, two and one. Five four, Oakland. Bottom of the second inning. Burns to right field. And playable out there for Pena, and there's one out. Mark Kotze last night of the first inning. Runner McLemore on base and a two-run shot straight away center field. And a slider from Corey Lytle ends up against the wall in center field. So Kotze has been leading off. Last night hit third, tonight hitting second. And Vaughn's first pitch to Kotze, and that's in for a strike. 24 runs have scored in this series so far, which is little more than one game and to an inning and a half long. Hit right to him and and two away. Angelo Jimenez, the second baseman, throws out Kotze, two down. Bobby Kelby, the hitter. Bobby Kelby. Kelby, who tends to enjoy facing left-handed pitching. So that's at the plate, and he takes the first pitch low for a ball. Bobby was safe at first base when Kotze was forced at second in the first inning down low ball two two balls no strikes pirates will be in here over the weekend were rained out at uh, Texas today and they're gonna have to stay over and play tomorrow would have been a day off for them make that one up 2-0 pitch Keldy drives it foul down the right field line and it won't be caught Still spending a nice off day in the Bay Area. Yeah. Seventh time this year the Pirates uh, have been thwarted by rain. I'll tell you, Pittsburgh, the years I'd go in there, you could count on it. <laughs> of course, at Three Rivers, uh, they, you know, they could wait it out with that AstroTurf. And they did. We had a lot of long nights there. Did you say wait it out? Or wait, wait it yeah. Out? We had it rained so hard there one night, I thought they were going to rename it Four River Stadium. That's how <laughs> bad it was. 3 1 pitch, and Kelty draws a walk. Well, it's time now for Chevron clean out of here. And of course, last year off bomb. Jermaine died June the 10th of last year against his former team, the Atlanta Braves. And JD, one of the highlights, he didn't have many last year, but this was a big one. And walk off home run and a pounding on his head as he approached home plate. Jermaine, a lot of highlights this year. A healthy Jermaine die. And he takes a pitch for a strike, going one. Die reached on an error by Hummel in the first inning, prolonging the inning and enabling the A's to go on and rack up five runs. He's leading 5-4. Keldy at first, two down. We're in the bottom of the second. Fastball missing outside. One ball, one strike. Main die with 12 home runs, sixth in the American League.
and the 1-1 pitch. And Dye hammers it in the left field. He's got a base hit. So Kelty stops at second base. And the A's get something going here with two out in the second inning. Yeah, Scott Hatterberg's our Bank of America higher standards, and Hatterberg with the two out hits. Sunday against the Toronto Blue Jays. Basically clearing double down the right field line. And of course, last night against Corey Lido, a two out grand slam. Scott's third career grand slam and talk about somebody is hot. Stay hot, hot, hot. Two men on base, two out. Off speed pitch drops in nicely for a strike on one. And they inquired about Bong down at uh, Louisville. They finally said everybody down there said he was the guy best suited to come up. Good stop by LaRue, the catcher. First Korean-born player ever to appear for the Reds. In fact, the first left-handed starter since John Vale back in September of last season. 66 games started by right-handers. I guess they couldn't get Joe Nuxall to come, <laughs> come back. Nuxie's not here on this uh, trip. Uh, does primarily the home games. Reds grew up in Cincinnati. Youngest player ever to appear in a major league game. He was, what, 15 years old? Nuxell, when he went into Philadelphia this year, that was the 56th different ballpark, in which Major League Park, in which he had seen a game or participated in one. Hatterberg with looping fly ball center field. Griffey on the run puts it away. A's threatened, but are turned back after 2 5 4. Oakland. To the third inning, 5 4. Oakland. Nine runs scored already, 12 hits in this ball game. And D'Angelo Jimenez to lead it off. Signed originally by the Yankees out of the Dominican Republic. And comes born in Santo Domingo in the Dominican. I believe that's where Juan Marichal was from. Oh, one pitch and driven foul down in the A's bullpen, where all of our heroes said, hey, get out of here, let's get out of here. Get a glove, guys. Well, Ryan's got one, he's the protector. Oh, and to the count. And that one is low for a ball. Chris Hammond got up last inning just the second inning. Most of the relievers stay in the clubhouse until fourth or fifth inning. Down in the bullpen there were only two. Chris Hammond was warming up and one other. So that's uh, having certain roles early in the game. Certain guys are not expected to pitch, but a couple of guys have to go down to keep Brandon Buckley and Bob Guerin company <laughs> down in the bullpen. Now the 2-2 delivery. Hammered foul again. work in. He was just throwing between uh, relief appearances. <laughs> there you go. A protector. Doing a good job. Off speed pitch and it almost got him against fool. Zito doesn't need three two counts. Uh, they're running up a very hefty pitch count in the first two innings. Now the 69th pitch he's thrown in this one. And it's hit to right field. And Burns eyeing it suspiciously. Makes the catch. It's what we've all been waiting for with the Pittsburgh Pirates in town. Spider-Man tonight. First ever visit by the Pirates. And this Friday, June the 11th at 7.05 p.m. First, 20,000 fans receive Spider-Man foam mask and hands. For tickets, call 510-762-BALL or visit Oakland Athletics. Com, a game you do not want to miss. Well, I know you've been waiting for it, and uh, 
especially that mask. Adam Dunn. Second out. Coxie make the catch. That's what Zito needs right now. If he one pitch at bats. So two out here in the third. 5-4 Oakland in front. And that'll bring Willie Mopena to the plate. He's had eight batters to think about his last strike that he saw from Zito. A curveball mm -hmm. that swung a couple of times. They're trying to hold up and then continue a swing. I think he swung at the first pitch. <laughs> Gets it again here. <laughs> Perfect. There's Armand. And Zito with a quick inning. A's five. Reds four. Tonight on the best damn sports show period, NBA Commissioner David Stern. In the midst of the... Uh, Finals of the NBA and also twin center fielder Tory Hunter. Bobby Crosby leading it off here on the bottom of the third. Crosby threw a walk in the first inning. A's leading five to four. And quite a first inning in the uh, Ballpark in Chicago tonight with the White Sox. Philly scored three in the top of the first. The White Sox came back with six. <laughs> Game ended up 14 to 11. The White Sox won it. Long ready to work and not fast enough, however, to suit Crosby, who steps out. Billy Wagner, the closer activated for the Phillies. Fortunately for him, he didn't get in that one tonight. I in a way to Crosby. But uh, just about everybody else did. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Five pitchers for the uh, Phillies. Crosby with a drive. Well hit. Way back. Crosby launches his ninth home run of the season. I don't think any other shortstop in the league has hit more than that. Like he leads. Crosby, Bobby on base last night four times with three hits, couple of doubles tonight, a walk home run, six consecutive times on the bases, and this one cleared it. Well hit, deep center field. Griffey, 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 he's got it. Uh, Bobby Crosby, we talk about opposite field, but look at this swing. A little toe tap and then crutch is hit. Middle of the plate from Bong and long gone off Bong. <laughs> and fastball and he is strong and he is hitting the ball hard. What a sweet swing by Bobby. I read a book several years ago about the South Pacific Islands called Where the Bong Tree Grows by yes. James Ramsey Allman. Well, it's growing out in left field right now in the stands. The Scudero looks at a strike. Marco with an RBI single. There's a. That's a ball player. Well pleased, Bobby Crosby. That's a, he's a ball player. Yep. You just look at it. Yeah. You know he's a ball player. He's he knows how to play the game. It's a compliment to, of course, his dad Ed, who played major league baseball and raised his son to. Following his footsteps, and he has done an outstanding job. And just beginning. That's the thing you have to think about is that he's going to get better. Two balls, one strike. 6 4 Oakland, bottom of the third inning. We're taking that one, 3 and 1. Kansas City beat Montreal tonight, four to two. And the Cubs topped the Cardinals, seven to three. And Wrigley Field, the only National League game, pure National League game, as Scooter rips a single in the left field.
and again, I think what we're seeing with Bong pitching tonight, fastball counts, hitters are getting fastballs. Don Gullett's pitching coach, Dave Miley, the, the manager, and 3-1. Here it comes down the middle, and Bobby Crosby got a 2-1 fastball, Scudero 3-1 fastball, and they're not missing them. And the location has been ideal from the hitter standpoint. Esteban Herman, who hit back to the mound in his first at bat. One out here in the third, and he pops a run out in front of the plate, grabbed by Fong. He just threw his best pitch of the night right there. Get the speedy Herman as Scudero takes second. Well, he's bunting for a base hit and almost got it. He bunted it, hit the plate, and of course, Herman can run. Slight, uh, at least almost collision between Bong and LaRue. And a right good strong there. throw and a good play by Sean Casey at first with a throw coming into the runner. Casey just reached and avoided the collision, pulled his glove and the hand back. Why that's dangerous for yes. a first baseman. With his arm out like that and the runner coming right at him. Come on, giving a sacrifice, which uh cool stretch, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a big stretch. Uh, Eric Burns, ball and no strikes. Burns thinking RBI in the person of Scooter, second base. Short right field. Willie Mopena puts it away and the A's with it, but not before they pick up another run. And after three, it's the A's six and Cincinnati four. A6, Cincinnati 4 as we go to the top half of the fourth inning. Barry Zito will be facing Reds catcher Jason LaRue, who singled and scored in the second inning. And Zito's first pitch. Fastball taken high. LaRue was a fifth round of the Reds in 1995. So, Red in their organization. Chases that high off speed pitch. Actually his fifth season with the Cincinnati Reds. Native Texan. I guess they teach them to swing hard in Texas. I think they all National Leaguers <laughs> are taught to swing hard. I like the aggressiveness, though. It's, it's great to see. Isn't it interesting how that develops over the years of characteristics that one league had? And then when you swing hard, that can happen. Home run. So Zito experiencing a tough night. Second home run that he's given up. This one with the bases empty to Jason LaRue, and it is suddenly a 6-5 to five ball game. Well, he's kind of uh, going back to where he was a few starts ago when he started to the ball up. And that's a little bit above the belt. And swing hard, and you get a pitch. Good things can happen. It happened for Jason LaRue. Crushed it. Second home run this season. And not a cheapie. Now Hummel takes the first pitch for a strike. And that one missed. One ball, one strike. Well, if you like action, we've had plenty of it in these two games. Only in the fourth inning of this one, Zito with a pitch right in on the hands that time. One ball, two strikes. Almost lifted double his uh, first time up. They throw him a change up in his uh, first at bat, kind of quick in his bat, sped it up a little bit. Bounce to Armand, back of third. 
Got him. Good throw by Armand. One out. Well, here's tonight's Aflac trivia question. Who are the only four shortstops to hit home runs after turning 40? Battle of Fielder, Ryan Trio. While you're pondering that, here is Ryan Friel. Zito's first pitch is low for a ball. I guess Larkin's 40. Huh? Larkin is 40. Yeah, yeah. so we, we've got him. I mean, he looks much younger than 40. <laughs> Not that 40's old, but. Not to me. <laughs> yeah. One ball, one strike. I'd have to say uh, Cal Ripken. I was thinking about him. I don't know. Was, was he 40 when he uh, retired? Oh, he's a shortstop, though. That's yeah, right. He, he moved to third. He moved to third. That's right. David Coffin reminds us. One ball, one strike. And that is low inside. Two and one. Hanks didn't play that long, did he? Did he play the 40? You're looking at me like I know the answer. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're told that he is not one of the answers anyway. <laughs> Fastball fouled back. Two balls, two strikes. Luke Appling, I think, uh, might be one. Well, he won, hit one at age 73. The uh, Cracker Jack, <laughs> Cracker Jack <laughs> Oaktown was against right. Warren Spahn. That's Maybe right. 75. That's I think he's 75 years old. <laughs> two, two pitch. And a beauty got him. <laughs> I remember Luke Appling was telling me one day. I asked him about that, and he said, I hit that ball. <laughs> I said, and then suddenly it struck me. How about him? I got to run around the bases. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Spawny with the high leg kick. Oh, God bless him. He yeah. <laughs> what a wonderful guy. Both of them. Yeah. Spawny yeah. and yeah. <laughs> Two out here in the fourth inning. And here's the man we were talking about, Barry Larkin. Well, I'm going to... I'm going to guess Hannes Wagner might be one. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the change up from Barry Zito has gotten him tonight. Got him thinking that two, two outs equal three. That Trammell wasn't 40. I don't think Alan Trammell played a long time. I'm thinking Hannes Wagner could have you're been. Going, you're going back in time. One, one pitch, and hit well to right field, and running it back is uh, Burns. Oh, boy, right in front of the wall, he puts it away. <laughs> A run for the Reds, and it is now 6-5, to five. A's. He's leading at 6-5, to five, bottom of the fourth inning. It's time for tonight's Carl Jr. in your face. Eric Burns sprinting back, back, turns around, a little Willie Mays basket catch. And as he backpedaled into the wall, Barry Larkin hit the change up a long way to right field, and Burnsy speed took him a little bit too fast, overrun it a bit, but still got it. In your face, Carl Jr. Here's Mark Kotze. And a strike. It's an interesting sequence with Burns making that catch with momentum carrying him back and uh, almost in, into the wall. Uh, you know, people talk about what... Uh, the ball should have come out, you know, and said, well, he had it long enough for the out. And long enough is not the answer, you know. <laughs> ball has to be removed as the result of a voluntary action by the fielder. But, uh, it was one of those situations where you see a guy make a catch, but, you know, hit the wall, the ball comes out. And, and uh, But the rule is well written in that sense. It has to be removed as the result of a voluntary action by the fielder. There is no... He held it long enough in baseball. Right field and a base hit for Katze. His second of the night starts to off the A's fourth. Kind of contagious. You know, he start scoring a lot of runs like yeah. uh, oh, last man. night. It carries oh, over for oh, some reason. Be. Unexplainable reason. Unless, you, of course, you have a great hitting ball club that's used to doing that uh, night after night. 
So there's Kotze at first and uh, Bobby Kelty who walked his last time up. It's high and away. Scott Rowland hit a pair of homers oh tonight wow. for the Cardinals. He's got about 100 ribbies now. He's got uh, hmm. at least, uh, as I looked before, he has at least uh, 62. Yeah. Uh, those he, both of them were solo shots, but uh, who knows if we drove in another run or not. Uh, that works it again. Kelby with a big swing. About three or four games ago, he got hit in the head with a pitch ball off his helmet. But he is having an outstanding year. Of course, the A's will be seeing Scott Rowland and the Cardinals next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Rowland St. Louis. That's 16 home runs. There's Conte with his lead at first. A six, Reds five, bottom of the fourth. Just sailing along here tonight. So Roland has driven in 62 on the season. Not even All-Star break yet. Juan Gonzalez, the last to have close to 100 at the All-Star break uh, five years ago. I think Greenberg had a 100 at the All-Star break one year. Didn't make the All-Star team. <laughs> 1930. Seven, I believe it was. He went on to drive in 183 runs that year, one short of Gehrig's 184. Good take by Bobby Kelty. It looked like it was a pretty good pitch, but uh, breaking ball not called a strike by Tim McCollum. And a pitch that Kelty looking fastball, but this time Bong and LaRue go to the breaking pitch in a fastball count. Well, if Kelty's ever going to get one, this is the spot right here. I think, I think so. Bong has maybe reached the limit. That one wasn't even close. Okay, it's time for the long-awaited answer to the Aflac trivia question. Who are the only four shortstops to hit homers after turning 40? How could we forget Ozzy Smith? Honest Wagner, well, I got that one right. Luke Appling, Barry Larkin. I got three out of four, Ozzy. How about that? Ozzy was one of those guys who I thought got better as a hitter the longer he played, you know, and uh, a little action uh, down in the Reds bullpen. If we look at uh, Brian Reed. Now, if you're around long enough and you've got some degree of Gray matter up there. You should get better as a hitter. Sure. You should learn more about right. the game as you're playing. And Ozzie did. You know, Ozzie was always great fielder, can't hit with the lick. Mm -hmm. Jermaine Dye with two men on the bases. A6, Reds 5, bottom of the fourth inning. Bong steps off. Long has uh, thrown 72 pitches so far. Some have been caught. <laughs> and a strike to Jermaine Dye, who reached on an error and ripped a base hit in his two trips to the plate. There are your base runners. Kotze at second, Kelty at first, and the 0-1. Dye chasing that one. And ahead of the first pitch strike, he came back with a changeup, and Jermaine Dye thinking he's getting another fastball, big swing, and good news, he didn't make contact. Big stride by Jermaine Dye right there. Long trying to keep away from Dye's power. And that one misses low. One and two. Circle change up the uh, index finger and the thumb making the circle and run with the middle finger, ring finger, little finger. Circle change up. Ball and two strikes. Uh, lifted foul. And out of play. Spectators. And there's the happy winner. 
And fellas ready to root for the Oakland A's here tonight. That paint is edible. You know, maybe if it tastes good, it's not bad to get your face painted like that. I certainly hope it's washable. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's true. That way. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. Not say at second, Kelly at first. Nice catch. Good running catch by LaRue. Now the fastball is that Bonger trying to throw outside or missing badly. LaRue getting his work in, especially in this half inning. Like a catcher, he gets a good jump on the ball. <laughs> Six runs, eight hits for the A's. Just missed. I think the place knows that. <laughs> Got a pretty good change up to die with a second strike. Does he get it again three and two, or does Ball go after him with a fastball, try to spot him? Tough part about a three-two count. What are you going to get? Well, we're about to find out, folks. Poke to the right side. They're going to get one at second base. Moving to third is Kotze. 3 6 on the course of Kildee at second. And Dye reaches. And the A's are runners at first and third. And one out. And they got the fastball maybe out of the strike zone, but Casey had to make a pretty good play to keep Jermaine Dye from getting a base hit to right field. No, He's going to move the runner over to the scoring position at third. Got Bobby Kelly, who used to have hair when he joined the ball club. So Jermaine Dye got to him with a haircut. Friendly neighborhood barber. So Hatterberg. RBI single his first time up. Short fly that Griffey ran down. Long exhibiting that snap throw to first base. And it's the only move we've seen him make. Uh, Jermaine Dye. Good off speed breaking ball. Caught uh, Hatterberg unawares that time. The count is 0 2. Now back to back, exactly the same type curve ball starting him at Scotty and started to swing and they've broken very nicely to the outside part of the plate. Now the 0 2. Hatterberg up the middle. Scores and the A's lead seven to five. Well, sometimes it's good to throw the same pitch three times in succession, but you better make them good. And Riley going to his bullpen after Scott Hatterberg took the third curveball in this at bat and three pitches. This time, though, good extension right back up the middle twice tonight, going up the middle with base hits and got the curve. Excellent hitting again. What are you talking about staying back yep. on the ball? Well, that is uh, going to be the last pitch thrown by uh, Bong in anger. And we will uh, depart along with him. And but the difference is we're coming back right after that. Bobby Crosby steps in. Facing Brian Reed. Traded away from the Yankees to the Reds. Exchange for Denny Nagel. Crosby started to go, couldn't stop. 0 oh 2 the count. Crosby unloaded his ninth home run of the season. He's back in the third inning. He has walked, scored a couple of runs tonight. 
die at second. Hatterberg at first. The run is in. And Crosby watches that one go. Out in Anaheim, the Brewers visiting the Angels. Ben Sheets, a perfect game. Six and two-thirds inning. Vladimir Guerrero broke it up with a ball that was on the dirt almost. It was down that low. Able to go down and get it and rake it in the left field to break up the perfect game by Ben Sheets. Pitch in the dirt, speaking of that. The Reds uh, having made a Nextel direct connect to the bullpen. And answering the call, Brian Reef. 20th game for the Reds out of the bullpen for Reef and Record a two and one fastball slider split finger fastball from the right hander. Two balls two strikes to Crosby. And that's three and two. Well, the Reds pitchers giving LaRue a workout. There is Bong. Three and a third innings. Nine hits so far. Seven runs. He's responsible for the two runners on the bases result of an error five of those runs are unearned Crosby drops one in the right field there's a base hit being waved around his die here comes the throw to the plate a dive the ball again gets away from LaRue <laughs> having a piece having quite a night Now Brad Fisher keeps waving the arms. Another excellent job of hitting opposite field by Bobby Crosby. And well, Willie Pena came Damian up with it Miller. on the first top. And pretty good throw to Jason LaRue. It was there. But he could not come up with it. Tried to catch the ball and reach. Did not have the ball, though. And Jermaine Dye <laughs> thought got to be out by plenty. Good slide to the inside. And LaRue could not hang on again tonight. Third time. 8-5 Oakland now as Miller takes low at a decent hop but he has just not been able as he slaps his <laughs> glove into the ball and runners at first and second and that one has slipped in for a strike I mean Crosby went from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2 and then the base hit to right field Miller three RBIs with a bases loaded double in the first inning and since flied to second had a Berg at second Crosby at first still only one out it's Miller gets one to left field well hit sending field back and that ball is off the wall Hatterberg scores here comes Crosby around third as Friel is having as tough a time as LaRue and two more runs across the plate Five RBIs tonight for Damian Miller, giving him eight in this series. And the A's now lead 10 to 5. The last three hitters, Scott Hatterberg 0 and 2, Bobby Crosby 0 and 2 to 3 and 2, and Damian Miller 0 and 2. Slider, look at the power of the ball jump off Damian Miller's bat. Off the wall over the head of Freel and right and left field and hit off the out-of-town scoreboard. Bobby Crosby scoring all the way from first. The A's in double figures again. Now Marco Scudero. And this one's popped up center field. And Griffey there to put it away. May 9, 2000 against the Dodgers. Damian Miller. A five RBI night. He's done it tonight. Ties it. Career high and Jermaine Dyer. Third baseman, Irma. Has scored a couple of runs tonight. Bobby Crosby, Scott Hatterberg have driven him in. Hatterberg with two. Crosby with two. Now here is Esteban Herman. Eighth man to come to the plate. Low one ball, no strikes. 30 runs have scored in this series so far. Roughly a very roughly a game and a half. <laughs> Not quite a game and a half. Miller, the runner at second base. And Armand, the middle. 
Larkin runs it down, and what? He can't make the throw. Might have hurt himself. Larkin, who had missed some games last week, as a matter of fact, uh, with a sore abdominal muscle. And Dane uh, may very well have uh, put a hurt on it again. You strain one of those. That yeah. is tough. And yeah. they don't recover quickly either. Come on up the middle, and when he reached down right there, that's when he came up, and there's no way he could throw the ball. Right there. Might have, he's limping a little bit. Might have, you know, he's checking the groin area. Limping, that's, that's too bad. Hmm. Land to lend him the cane I've been using <laughs> the last few <laughs> days. <laughs> well, we're going to have a new shortstop. See Felipe Lopez coming out of the Reds dugout. Larkin getting a fine hand from the folks here in Oakland. And Lopez. Takes over his spot. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Replacing the injured Barry Larkin at shortstop, number two, Felipe Lopez. Well, when Burns comes to the plate, uh, he will be the ninth man to do so. This is the second time in this game that uh, the A's have sent at least nine men to the plate. They sent ten in the first inning. Eric Burns last night, four at bats in the first four innings. And again tonight. Right. right fielder, Eric Burns. Well, with runners at first and third, Burns uh, been hitting the ball in the air tonight, but uh, not always the best thing for him. As a rule of thumb, usually the first ball hit will go to the guy who just came in the game. <laughs> and Burns looks over the first one, takes ball one. Well, Burns, he liked to hit it to either side or over his head. Yeah, pretty good idea. And if he hit it on the ground or on the line drive, that would make Dave Hudgens and Kid Maka very happy. Miller at third, Armand at first. And that is low ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Brian Reith having taken over for Jun Kun Bong. Two balls, no strikes. And that one is inside, ball three. Talking about pitchers running on pitch counts the other night, Al Leiter. 114 pitches he threw in five and two-thirds innings. Not only two hits, but he walked six. That's a lot of pitches. 3-0 to Burns, and that is ball four. Call it a strike. <laughs> but despite the fact that it was ball four, the plate umpire apparently has called it a strike. I guess Bernsey figured, considering it almost hit him. <laughs> and it's, you know, Tim McClellan has such a delay, he could have watched Bernsey take off to first base and say, oh, okay, guess what, strike. Hmm. Well, we've seen a couple of automatics tonight, 2-0 two, uh, two no on Griffey and now 3-0 on uh, Great. Eric Burns. I think he better be swinging now unless this plate's thrown out of the ball. Like that, right? that is ball four, we think. Well, Mark uh, Kotze, who started all of this some time ago, was up to bat for the second time in the inning. First time up, he singled and scored a run. 
He's got two hits and three trips tonight. Bases are loaded. Miller at third, Armand at second, Burns at first. I'd say aggressively attacking that first pitch and fouling it back. Well, the A's could go a long way to uh, really getting healthy. They're leading by five runs right now, but as we've seen, that, that may not mean a whole lot in this game. Ball and a strike. This team's grinding it out here tonight. Bases loaded. Now the 1 1. That's a short left field. Coming on, Trio. And he's got it. Inning is over, but the A's do some more damage with four runs. It's now 10 5. Well, our Bank of America, America higher standards. The big red machine of the 1970s Johnny Bench, Pete Rose, Tony Perez, George Boster, Joe Morgan. Of course, the world champions, they just could do it all, man. They could hit, pitch, great defense. All of Famers and Sparky Anderson, Johnny Bench, Joe Morgan, Tony Perez, of course, Pete Rose, the all time hit leader. The Big Red Machine, and of course, the big World Series 1975. Took it down to Game 7 after the Carlton Fisk home run in Game 6, but Joe Morgan driving home the go-ahead run. And Ken Griffey, part of that uh, machine as well. Here to watch his son, Junior, try to get two more home runs to get to the 500 mark. And he will hit second in this half inning. Following Sean Casey, who steps in now to face Barry Zito, inning number five. Zito misses with the first offering. Barry Zito probably feels like he's already pitched a complete game. It's 89th pitch coming up, and just in the fifth inning. Carries a career batting of average of 300 into this game. Second right now in the National League in hitting. And that one saws off a bit of the inside corner for a strike. Barry Zito. Got a five run lead with which to work. That one will even the count now at two balls and two strikes. Down Anaheim there in the ninth inning, still scoreless in sheets. Benjamin had a perfect game for six and two-thirds innings, pitching for the Brewers against the Angels. The A's started to play tonight one game behind the Angels in the Western Division. Two balls, two strikes the count. And Casey drives one deep center field. Katze racing back, racing back, and puts it away. Well, a little heavy air. This game is uh, approaching 9 o'clock, and the heavy air might have knocked it down a little bit. Pretty good swing by Casey on a fastball from Barry Zito. Long part of the park this time of the, of the ninth, though. Good jump by Mark Katze. Caught it right at the warning track. Good play, as always, by Katze, who plays a great center field. Boy, he certainly does. Yeah. The more you watch him. Well, the jumps, of course, can play relatively shallow, but gets a great jump on the ball going over his head so he can catch up to it. Here's Junior. Drove in a run with a base hit his first time up. One for two here tonight. Hayes employing the shift with Crosby playing just to the right and to the left of second base. Ball, however, uh, fielded by Reds first base coach Randy Whistler. One ball, one strike. Zito to Griffey. That breaking ball, a little high, two and one. Every time a pitch is thrown to Griffey, a few flash bulbs going over, <laughs> going off over the Hayes dugout on the third base line. Which 
you're nursing a five run lead you can maybe fool around a little bit with respect to Griffey not that Zito enjoys the prospect of walking somebody but. Well the first thing Lou Pinello said when the Giants arrived at St. Petersburg to take on the Tampa Bay Devil Rays is saying he's so far out fans come to watch Barry Bonds play we're going to pitch to him once it's had a chance to cost us a game. Looked like I'm watching some of the highlights. They were doing exactly that. Three one to Griffey. He takes a strike. Three and two. It was a pitch that uh, Griffey was looking more to the inside part of the plate. Another fastball outside here. Well, he took his home run cut there, but fouled it back. Count remains. Three balls, two strikes. to see the Reds in contention but uh, just don't think they've got the pitching to carry them uh, the rest of the way Griffey yeah. goes around but you get a piece Stop, of that foul one tip. foul tipped it Not on strikes second out for Zito high change up could not hold up his swing started tried to hold up but his body carried him through and Tim McClellan yeah, saying he foul tipped yeah. the ball anyway So with two down, here is Jimenez coming to the plate. A's 10, Reds 5, top of the fifth. And that's low for a ball. Really isn't, does a catcher. What about catching foul tips? I mean, you can't plan for no. it. It's just a, you know, just getting your glove in the right place at the right time. And, uh, well, you put your glove where the, you're holding the target for the pitch to be thrown. and. It's a curveball, fastball, slider, doesn't matter. You, you're holding the target and batter swings. You, you hope it's just one of those, tick, tick, you know, that just barely ticks the back. Yeah, that you can hang on, but fans yell when a catcher can't hold on to a third strike and a foul tip. And, hey, it's not that easy. Whatever possessed you to become a catcher? I was playing shortstop one day, and actually in Little League, and the catcher didn't show up. There you go. Yeah. And you said, I'll bet it's be fun to wear that mask and all that equipment. Who wants to catch? I said, I'd love to. Actually, if you look at the, all the numbers, pitchers, catchers, infielders, a lot of different infielders, pitchers, and outfielders, but only usually two catchers per team. A walk to Jimenez keeps standing alive for the Cincinnati Reds. There's a former catcher who's happy to be a first baseman, Scott Hatterberg. Scott Hatterberg. I, <laughs> I saw him in spring training in Fort Myers, Florida with the Red Sox when he was a catcher. Adam Dunn steps in. A couple of fly balls uh, off his bat have ended up in Kotze's glove tonight. Zito starts him out with a strike. You know, hard to believe it. That was a pitch number 105 for Barry Zito, but only his first walk of the game. And that was to Jimenez. The 0 1 pitch. And this one is skied. Miller coming back, and he can only watch it land in the seats. 0 and 2. Then when you uh, so you became a catcher and uh, could guys steal then or uh, little league? Could yes, I can't remember what yeah. the rules are. I never played there. There was no I, such yeah. little league when I was. A kid. Yeah, I, and I don't remember if it was if it was keep a foot on the bag and no lead off. I don't remember that. But I don't think there was a national league when I was <laughs> a kid. Breaking ball is high, one and two. I think when Tom Hanks. Uttered those immortal words, there's no crying in baseball. He'd never seen a little league game. <laughs> <laughs> One two delivery, and it's outside for a ball. Two and two. We've had some footage of Barry Zito pitching in his amateur ranks down. I don't know how old he was, but he had this same pitch when he was a, a youngster. Can you imagine kids trying to hit oh, Barry's curveball? <laughs> no chance whatsoever. 
Runner at first, two out, two balls, two strikes. And this one lifted in the air. And for the third time tonight, Kotze takes a fly ball off his bat. Going to the bottom of the fifth, 10-5 Oakland. To the bottom of the fifth inning, the A's 10 and the Reds 5, and Bobby Keldy to lead it off. Facing Ryan Reith. And Keldy wasting a little time. A foul ball past third base. Where you see Chad Bradford uh, and in the A's bullpen. Just the possibility that uh, Zito may have gone as far as he's going to go tonight. 109 pitches in five innings. I'd say he's probably done for the night for sure. Oh, and two now to Keldy as that ball just glanced off his bat. One ball, two strikes. Final game of the A's Red Series will take place here tomorrow evening. With, uh, Rich Harden face Jose Acevedo. Keldy watches a pitch in the dirt. I think LaRue's going to need a new set of <laughs> shin guards before this game is over. Well, he might need the whirlpool of cold, icy water and heat. It's covered more ground than some of the outfielders tonight. Now the 2-2. And that runs the string out. I think called 82 pitches thrown by Bong in just three and a third innings. And Reef has thrown 25. So he's uh, called a few in this again, just the fifth inning. Kelly with another foul to the screen. Well, runs have been the order of this uh, series. A's winning last night 13 to 2, leading tonight 10 to 5. Boys getting a little rest after running around the bases as they have tonight. And Keldy goes around and becomes the first out of the inning. Well, the uh, Pirates in town on the June the 12th, Saturday, it'll be the annual beer festival, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the East Side Club, sponsored by Oakland Tribune. And that would be the A's versus against the Pirates at 105. Free admission with game ticket, microbrew tastings, and Pilsner glasses for purchase for fans 21 and over. New Belgium Brewing, Labatt USA, Bison Brewing, Pyramid, Bass, and many more. Tickets 510-762 Ball or OaklandAthletics.com. Good work, Ray. You got that in before the game ended. <laughs> Kelly strikeout becomes the first A's player to uh, strike out in this ball game tonight. It's Jermaine Dye, who has been a busy guy in his three at bats. He's reached three times, has one hit, and uh, gets one back into the upper deck foul. You got it? What did he catch? Oh, that's a baby. That's a baby. I hope the ball's not The there. stork may have flown by him while we weren't looking. She got the ball and he got the baby. Die chased a pitch that was uh, a little bit outside. One ball, two strikes. Die getting a semi-night off. He's the DH here tonight. First time this season he's acted in that role. One out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Low, two and two. Jermaine did not get a hit in his first at bat, but he made contact. Humble made the air and opened the door for the A's to score five unearned runs in the first. And that was the beginning of the game. And right now they have a five run lead, 10 to five in the fifth. And I gets it down the left field line. That one is headed toward the left. Jermaine is headed in the direction of second base. I get to like that DH uh, business. Hit number 13 for the A's. Well, as he did his second at bat, a solid base hit. This time a double to left field, and 
JD getting the fastball just as he did in the second. The and he hit it so hard. Friel, watch as Friel goes after it and just shoots by him, hits the turf. And Raz here at the Coliseum and goes right by him. Well, here's Hatterberg, who has had a pair of RBI singles tonight and three trips to the plate. And he takes a pitch for a strike. Hatterberg has pushed his average up to 309. Jermaine Dye, the runner at second base. He's 10, Reds 5. Hatterberg went for the off-speed pitch that time, 0-2. Atterberg setting him up. <laughs> well, we talked about his uh, abilities as a two strike hitter. Talking to him after last night's game facing Corey Lido and it got the inside fastball, the sinker that came back. And I said, Were you looking for it? And he said, I hate to say it, I was just because it seemed like that was the only pitch Lido was getting over. Starting the fastball in to the lefty, try to get a buckle the knees and bring the ball back and look for it, got it, and hit the slam. Right field. In the air, center field. Griffey drifting over. And that's the second out of the inning. So far in this red series, the A's have had two five run innings and two four run innings. There's the red the series. Bobby Crosby. Had a three-run inning back in the second and the uh, home run by Larkin. Uh, Bobby Crosby. Walked, scored in the first inning, homered in the third, drove in a run with a base hit in the fourth. And here we are in the fifth. And he's up again. And he lays off that pitch. Oh, he's got his average up to 261, started the game at 253. And it just keeps climbing. Oh, and one the count. Die, you see the runner at second base. Two out. Down and away for a ball, one and one. Nineteen thousand three hundred and two showed up tonight to watch the A's in action. And Crosby takes a low ball, too. Two balls, one strike. See how much more relaxed he is and how he's taking the pitches now. He took the 3 2 change up from Wong in the first inning. Just took a slider from Reith right here. And that's not jumping at the ball as much as he was in the early part of the season. Just trusting his hands, staying back, and attacking the ball when he gets it. And laying off that one runs the count to three and one. Ryan Reed, second Reds pitcher of the night. That had been a whole lot easier for him than it was for Bong. Crosby rips it foul. Uh, here's our tonight's uh, Nissan drive of the game. Bobby Crosby, his ninth home run of the season. A shot on a 3-2 fastball to left field. A solo home run. Crosby now has hit his last four home runs here at the Coliseum. His first five on the road. Well, he's up there with a count of three and two. Two out runner at second base. And he stays alive. Crosby, this is his fourth at bat. He's seen 25 pitches this one coming up 25th pitch he's seen tonight spread out his stance a little more especially with two strikes up the middle and it hits off of Reed who scrambles and throws it A's leave a runner at second 10-5 Oakland after five A's leading 10-5 as Barry Zito about to call it a night heads for the clubhouse And Chad Bradford comes on to replace him. They go to the top half of the sixth inning. Bradford, 26 appearance for the Summer Raider out of the A's bullpen, 3-2 record. And 
224 opponents batting average, giving up four home runs, but the A's bullpen needed to finish out the last four innings yeah, of this game. But Barry Zito just got about a month's yeah, worth of run support yeah, as he yeah. got 10 runs tonight from his club in five innings. Willie Mopena, who has been up twice, he has struck out and hit back to the mound, will lead it off here in the top of the sixth. Even with a 10 to 5 score, you're still a little <laughs> leery about this game in light of the uh, tendency to have the score shift dramatically. Good breaking ball from Bradford that time. One and one. And Mark Mulder came out after seven last night. Barry Zito five tonight. Mark Redmond five on Sunday. Of course, Tim Hudson had the complete game shut out on Saturday against the Blue Jays. Now the one one to Willie Mopain and that had him fooled tried to check his swing couldn't do it. One two to Willie Mopain that's lifted in the air toward Katze. And that's one out. Well, we got word on Barry Larkin. He left the game with pain in the left lower abdomen. Reds are going to send him back to Cincinnati tomorrow. Be examined by the Reds team doctor. So we will not get to see Barry Larkin anymore in this series. And here's the play that it, where it happened. Left side as he reached down, picked the ball up, and limping off. Holding his left side, and Dave Miley hopes that he is well quickly. As Reds trying to hang on to the Central Division lead. Well, with one out here in the, in the inning, <laughs> Jason LaRue, the batter, that one is inside for a ball. Quitted himself nicely at the plate. He has a fan here waiting to take his picture. Ooh, look at that tantalizing breaking ball for a strike. So all the flash clubs have not been for Ken Griffey Jr. tonight, I guess. <laughs> LaRue has uh, singled and homered and has scored uh, two of the Reds' five runs. laid off of that one. The catcher LaRue might have a tendency more to go out and try to catch that ball than <laughs> hit it. Oh, there's another pitch well away from the plate. I better catch it. As he's done so often tonight. Two balls, two strikes. Oh, tried to pull him and did. Got the call on the inside. Well, our next telecast will come your way tomorrow. Rich Harden takes the mound for the A's as they conclude their interleague series against the Cincinnati Reds. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. here on Fox Sports Net. Two out, top of the sixth inning. And Tim Hummel, the third baseman, steps in. Zito going five innings tonight, eight hits, five runs. They were all earned. He struck out five and walked the batter. And now Hummel takes a pitch inside. Fielder of the Cincinnati Reds. Been up about a month after his recall from Louisville. And that one gets the inside corner for a strike. They don't really say Louisville in Louisville. It says from Louisville. Louisville. Yeah. Louisville. Hey, Balmer. <laughs> Balmer. Right. Balmer, Maryland. 
the 1-1 pitch. And that one is a little low and inside. 2-1. And hey, what are your thoughts on going to St. Louis? Be a thrill for you? It sure it will be. My goodness. Only if I can see Stan the man. Well, he's been known to come to a sure. game now and then. Bring his harmonica. If he knows you're coming. Yeah. <laughs> you ever meet him? I never have. Oh. Never have. God, I hope you get the chance. I know. I watched him enough when I was growing up. Shanked foul to the screen. What a nice man. Friendly guy. I wonder Musial was so popular. Not only a great player, but uh, just one of the guys. Two balls, two strikes, two out. That one hit to the side of the mound, gathered in by Bradford. Three up, three down. Hard to believe we reached the bottom of the sixth already as uh, Damian Miller steps in to lead it off and wasting little time, drives one to right field. Hanging up out there, and Willie Mopena puts it away, one out. Well, the new uh, Stanford head coach right here, Trent Johnson. He had been at uh, University of Nevada, Reno. I know uh, Mark Hotze talking to him, so he's in the park tonight. And so we welcome him Nobody. to the Bay Area. Second baseman, Marco Tudero. There's the final of the Lakers. Even it out one to one, 99 to 91 victory in overtime over the Detroit Pistons. And Marco Scudero at the plate. It's a pitch that's low, one ball, no strikes. It's Kobe Bryant's pretty good, isn't he? Get a three-point <laughs> shot at tie up the game, and send it to yeah. OT. It's good to row, not too bad himself. Two base hits tonight, a run batted in. And another fly ball into right field. And he backs up a couple of steps. Two away. Well, Nevada Arena had quite a season. A little noise. I'd say was taking batting practice and uh, Mike Matthews gets loose in Red's bullpen, but I'd say turn around said it's Trent Johnson. Of course, I'd say lives in Reno and watch a lot of the games. That's Devon Armand, the batter. And the infield hit his last time up. Ball and no strikes. Fortunes change uh, wasn't that long ago. All you heard about in uh, Nevada was UNLV. Mm -hmm. right. and this man, the Wolf Pack on the map, the Whoa. Nevada Reno Club. On getting the start at third tonight is Mark McLemore has played three in succession and gets the night off. Ken Monk doing a good job making sure Mac gets the proper rest after coming off knee surgery, and especially with Eric Chavez out for four to five to six weeks, maybe seven. We'll see. But that's a pretty good deal. Three games in a row, get a night off. Yeah, works for me this year. <laughs> Game count. Armand toward the hole. Scoop nicely by Hummel. Makes the play. Three up, three down. Heading to the seventh inning. The A's 10 and the Reds 5. Top of the seventh inning. 10 runs, 13 hits, no errors for the A's. Five runs, eight hits, an error for the Reds. Top of the order for the Reds. Ryan Friel to lead it off. For his first base hit tonight. And happy does not have to see another Barry Zito changeup. Got him a couple of times tonight. Now he's got the sinking submarine from uh, Barry Zito, or from uh, Chad Bradford. I don't like it's any better.
Reds really like this kid. Reds are, despite what's happening here in these two games, a good looking ball. Nice future. Another roll foul now, and Bradford too late. And Friedel gets his first hit. On our Pepsi spotlight, the A's number one draft picks in the major leagues. Tom Van Poppel with the Cincinnati Reds, John Wasden in Texas, Ben Grieve in Milwaukee, Xavi, Mulder, Zito, Crosby here, Jeremy Bonderman. Now with Detroit Tigers, Eric Dubow with the Baltimore Orioles. Some great drafts by the Athletics and some major league stars. There is Todd Van Poppel who started the game for the Reds on Sunday and will not start in this series. And Ken Maka is out to make a, a change. So we'll take a break right here and as Chris Hammond comes in, we'll be back in a moment. Are oh, you looking at the veteran Chris Hammond, who is about to oppose uh, his former club, Cincinnati Reds? 18th appearance for the lefty, two and one record. Of course, with the aggressive hitters, this is a perfect type of a team for Chris Hammond to face because the outstanding changeup keep the hitters off balance. And I think Ken Mock is hoping that's exactly what happens as they'll face Lopez, Casey, and Griffin batters that he could possibly face with Friel on first. And the pitch to Felipe Lopez is taken inside. One ball, no strikes. Hammond was with the Reds as far back as 1990. And there's that changeup. Talk to pitchers who have Excellent change-ups. They'll say they love to face aggressive hitters. As they're looking fastballs most of the time. And a pretty good pitch right there. One ball and two strikes. Hammond spent uh, three seasons with the Cincinnati Reds before moving on to the Marlins. And a couple of other places. Runner at first base, as you see. One ball and two strikes. And that's all for Lopez. So Hammond comes on and does his job nicely. And gets to face Casey. Throwing three in succession. Fell behind the first pitch, then throwing three change-ups. And this time out of the strike zone with the pitch and still got him a swing and miss. Sean Casey with a couple of hits and three at bats. Runner at first base and one out here in the seventh inning. And Casey drives one center field. Katsi to his right. Keeping Katsi busy out in center field tonight. Sixth fly ball that he's put away. And now here is Ken Griffey Jr. Jr. with an RBI single his first time up. Hit the ball in the air a couple of times since, and they've been caught. And the first pitch is taken high for a ball. Barry Zito started. Bradford worked an inning plus. And now Hammond. And Griffey tempted by that pitch. One ball, one strike. Doesn't matter how long you play this game, they can still fool you every once in a while. All eyes focused on Griffey as he attempts to reach the 500 mark in home runs. He needs two. And he 
lays off that one. Two balls, one strike. So those photographers will see a lot of flash bulbs, but the photographers down that uh, we just showed, they'll push the button, take about 10 snapshots, 10 shots as the pitch is being delivered. You get the full sequence of swing should Griffey hit the home run or whatever, make contact. Inside, three and one. Get those rapid fire cameras. Mm -hmm. Not like us, where we have to wait for the uh, flash to recycle. <laughs> <laughs> the throws in the amateurs. 3 1 pitch. Griffey, right side. Crosby. Get that. That's going to go in as a 6 3. And who would ever know? <laughs> A's lead at 10 5. We've reached the Jack Dan, the seventh inning stretch. Oakland. Oh, Left-hander Mike Matthews has come on to pitch for the Reds as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. So facing Eric Burns to start things off. And the first pitch from Matthews is taken low. Matthews, former Cardinal. Brewer, Padre. And Burns lifts this one high and foul. And out of play. Matthews earned his keep pretty well with the Padres last year, getting into. 77 games. He won six and lost four. All of his decisions were in relief. 1-1 one, one pitch. And that is taken low for a ball. Burns tonight. 0 for 3 with a walk. And he lays off that one. Three balls, one strike. So Burns last night uh, played some left field, played some center field, played some right field in last evening's game. Hard at third, Hummel stays with it. And Casey makes a good grab at first to complete the out. And you cannot waste a lot of time. Eric Burns flying down the line. Hit the ball on the ground, but right at the third oh, baseman. Man. And swinging and swings the bat and fly. See the dirt kicking up behind his cleats. Mark Kotze for his fifth trip to the flight and he hits one right at Lopez. But Matthews making some good pitches here in this inning. See balls hit directly at fielders. You know, at least he's getting the location. The he's left fielder, Bobby Kelty. Now Bobby Kelty steps in. He'd like to pick up a hit here tonight. Yet to do so. Uh, he sees 13 of them posted on that scoreboard, along with the 10 runs the A's have scored. Leading 10-5 Oakland here in the seventh inning. Bobby Kelty, according to Dave Hudgens, he has approached from the right side. And he's trying to adapt the same approach, hitting against right-handers, turning around to bat left-handed with the does not have as much of a move up his bat. Well stroke, but in the wrong place because Griffey's there. <laughs> For the third out of the inning, and we go to the eighth, Oakland 10, Cincinnati. Oakland A's baseball is brought to you by Nextel. Done. Call 1-800-NEXTEL-9. Eighth inning is rolled around. The A's in front 10 to 5, and Angelo Jimenez to lead it off.
Chris Hammond working on the map. And that's a strike. One and one the count. about the Brewers playing in the Central Division of the National League and playing well this year under Ned Yost, their second-year manager. They're giving the Angels a run for the money down in Anaheim. First game of their series, scoreless in the 12th inning. Grounded fair past third base and down toward the A's bullpen. And on his way to second is Jimenez, so is the throw. Oh, safe at second base. Mm. Oh, boy, some throw by Keldy in left field. Down five runs, and looked like it was a cheer double. Down the line, past Herman, but Bobby Crosby getting over to the ball, circling around, and watch this laser. One hopper to Scudero, quick tag, and foot came off the bag initially, but he grabbed the bag with his left hand. There's how close the tag was to getting him. Now Adam Dunn with a big swing. Well, if the Reds didn't know much about Keldy before, they know a little more about him now. Where is the umpire? Oh, he's behind it. Hmm. So he really didn't see the tag that well as he was behind the run. Dunn lays off the breaking ball. One maybe, ball, one strike. Maybe he was as surprised as Jimenez uh, <laughs> was. Well, I was getting ready to call him out. Field in Colbert at second base tonight. Probably shouldn't have done, but done with three fly balls to center tonight. Amy Miller will have no play on this one. Adam Dunn with the lift stroke. <laughs> and he's lifted it 17 times into the seats this year. Taking a deep breath. Action in the A's bullpen, Jim Sear. Loosening up. And that one's down and away. Two balls, two strikes. I'd have to think for, for the National League players, because there's no DH used in the National League. They might get to swing the bat as a DH in spring training in American League parks, but it's an adjustment for them. They're accustomed to playing in the field, and it's it's a good opportunity for a manager to get an extra player in as a DH. Yeah, there's such a rhythm to this yeah. game, you know, where you're used to certain routines mm -hmm. as a player. Coming in off the field, grabbing your bat, going up to hit, sure. rather than just sitting around in the dugout. And a base on balls. Ominous beginning to the top half of the eighth. And Marka not too pleased by the prospect of uh, two men on and nobody on. As Willie Mopena steps in. Sunday's game, Ken Marka saw his starter and Mark Redman go just five innings, but he had Justin Dukesha come in to pitch three. As the A's went on to add four more, giving the A's the eight to three win. Swipe at that one by Pena. 0 and 1. I've heard some fellows who've DH'd to say that sometimes it's been tough for them to get their head in the game. You know, you're out in the field, you're in the game on every pitch. I think the biggest thing is just to stay loose. Because at least yeah. when you're playing defense, you are running in. Off the field, and uh, DH, you have a tendency to sit around, force yourself to try to stay loose, and then all of a sudden you have to try to run hard, get out a base hit, or go for an extra base hit. Hammond is at second, done at first, and that is high from Chris Hammond. One ball, two strikes. Slip it by on the inside and just missed. 
Much to the dismay of uh, 19,302 uh, umpires here at the Coliseum tonight. Now the 2 2. Crosby cuts it off. Throws. Too late. Base is loaded. Good dive by Bobby Crosby, the shortstop, to keep that ball from going into left field. Would have been great if he'd have been able to take a shorter route to get somebody, but both runners on the move, running hard, but a great effort. It saved a run. Crosby and almost threw out. Hunter Pena going to first base, but could not. And that's going to be it for Chris Hammond. As Masir comes in, we'll return right after this. Uh, tomorrow night, the Cincinnati Reds, the final game during the regular season here at the Coliseum. It's at 7.05, and it will be the next double play Wednesday. $2 view tickets, $1 hot dogs. Brought to you by BART. For tickets, call 510-762-BALL. Or visit OaklandAthletics.com. King Griffey Jr. Still too shy of 500. And probably will get one more at bat. This is the eighth inning. Nobody out. Three runners on base. Jim Masir on to pitch for the oh, Athletics. Making his 25th it. appearance. And Jimmy is two for three in save opportunities. But this is not a save. It is. Try to keep the A's from losing their five-run lead. That's where it stands right now. Well, he's inherited a mess with uh, Jimenez at third, Dunn at second, Pena at first, and Leroux at right. Taking ball one. Leroux with a home run and a single and three at bats. And Leroux chasing that one. One and one. We talked about before about the uncomfortable feeling that one had about this game uh, earlier that uh, the way this, these teams have been going at each other that 10 to 5 was probably not going to be the way it ends. But it's still 10 to 5. <laughs> well, Arusi and a pretty good screwball from Jim Messier and this is the way he wants to throw it. Started out and ended up down and in. Maybe off the plate a bit. Not a lot of margin for error if you don't throw that pitch right and it hangs. You got problems. Well, back in the fourth inning, Jason LaRue off of Barry Zito. A 2 1 fastball got it in the middle of the plate and he put it up in the seats here at the Coliseum. One of two homers hit by the Reds tonight. Larkin hit one earlier. Crosby hit one. And a swing and another foul. Five home runs hit here last night, three tonight. Well, the A's are hoping there won't be one here. With the bases loaded, nobody out. One two pitch. And Messier got him. Now there's one down. Well, he got the screwball, but also the two-seamer down and in. And LaRue wanted to hold up his swing. Too close to take. And look how close he is to the plate. The ball just ate him up inside. Now it's Hummel gets ready to step in. See a little conference out there on the mound. That's Cruz pinch hitting for him. They just made the announcement. Is yep. Forget Hummel stepping in. Jacob Cruz. The big home run for the Reds. Uh, their last game at home on Sunday, which they won it with a ninth inning rally. Takes the first pitch for a strike. Home run 
one he hit the other day was quite a blast. They said 422 feet. This one, Hatterberg knocks down. A run will score, but getting to the base to take the out at first base was Messier. Yeah, about the only thing that Hatterberg could have done had he come up with the ball cleanly was get the force at second, but main thing to get it out. Ball came up on him just a little bit, but Messier covering the bag quickly and Hey, Jimmy moves so quickly off the mound. Comes back right down the line and quickly turns around to see if the runner, Don, has any thoughts about trying to score around in the bag. It makes that a tough throw. Well, that you have to lead the pitcher coming across. You yeah. can't throw it at him. You've got to throw it in front of him. Well, it's now a 10 to 6 game. Pitch is taken by Friel. Well, here's what you're talking about. This is the key to lead him, not throw it where he is departed. Up the line so he can catch the ball and not have to run into the runner. Two balls, no strikes. A run is in. Dunn is now at third base. Pena is at second. We're in the eighth inning. Three and oh. Arthur Rhodes starts to throw in the A's bullpen as that is ball four and the bases are loaded. And here. Yeah, yeah I think uh, Ken Mockler Davis coming out. I, I think what happened when Joe Messier Maybe he jumped a little bit towards the bag at first base, and of course he's had the knee problems. And the four pitches he just made to Friel catches the ball, and and this is what I'm talking about right there: jumping and landing hard. And it might have affected him as he yeah. reached down a little bit and grabbed it, and he's going to come out of the game. Grabbed his right knee here. Well, yet another pitcher departs from this one tonight. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Our game summary is brought to you by Jack of the Box. It was Damian Miller, a big night last night, a big one again tonight, driving in three with a double down the right field line. Barry Larkin, a three-run home run on a curveball from Barry Zito. And unfortunately for the Reds and Larkin, he had to leave with an abdominal strain lower side. He will be flying back to Cincinnati tomorrow to get the check. And Bobby Crosby, Ninth home run of the season, line drive to left field. And Scott Hatterberg continues with his RBI singles. A couple more tonight driven in. And the A's leading 10 to 6. We're in the top of the eighth inning. The A's with 13 hits, no errors. Red six runs, 11 hits, one error. Damian Miller is driven in five tonight after three last night. Scott Hatterberg, five ribbies last night, a couple tonight. He's turned it over to Arthur Rhodes, trying to get final out here in the eighth inning. But he inherits the bases loaded. Arthur making his 23rd appearance. Arthur 8 for 12 in save opportunities. Came in to pitch in Sunday's game in a non-save situation. But displayed a mid-90s fastball, which is uh, something the A's have been looking for. Well, he's going to need all he's got to prevent any more runs. Coming into bases loaded situation here in the eighth. And the Reds are going to send up a uh, pinch hitter. So look at Brandon Larson. So he'll bat for Lopez. Detect a pattern in this number two spot in the Reds batting order now. Larkin, Lopez. Larson. And Maka. Well, that's why Ken Maka, of course, saw a very 
He's going to go just five innings tonight after Mark Mulder, seven last night. But as you mentioned, in two of the last three games, the starters going just five innings. But Mark Redman able to get the win on Sunday going five. Barry Zito hopes to do the same tonight, going just five innings. And then Larson making his first pinch hitting appearance this season. And what a spot for him with Dunn at third, Paney at second, Friel at first, and Arthur Rhodes throws his first pitch and a fastball high and away. Big moment in this ball game. And <laughs> big swing. He got, <laughs> he got a pitch right there. Get the veteran Arthur Rhodes. And rather youthful looking Larson. One one pitch. And that's over for a strike. Fastball that uh, is not the mid 90s He's supposed to be inside, left it outside. Good frame job by Damian Miller. Keeping the ball as a strike zone and not reaching too much for it. Inside, scoots away, but not far enough to tempt the base runner at third. So, Kern, or I'm sorry, uh, done. At second. Big pitch Dunn here. Does sir. not want to go to the three and two. And he won't have to as he blows it by Larson to end the inning. Bottom of the eighth coming up. It is 10 to 6 Oakland. Second base, number six, Ryan Creel. Remaining the ball game playing third base, number 16, Brandon Larson. Now playing left field, number nine, Jacob Cruz. And now playing shortstop, number three, D'Angelo Jimenez, who is from second base. Now the Reds have made some wholesale changes in their defensive alignment as uh, Jermaine Dye takes the first pitch that's low for a ball. swing at that one. So we have uh, Cruz now playing left field. Larson is playing third. Jimenez is now the shortstop and Friel is playing second base. I think this is spring training again. So National League, when you have to make all the double switches, of course, this being American League with the DH, it's just a matter of know, maneuvering. No, no. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. And that is low from Matthews. Two and two. So I say in all likelihood, this would have to be the probably the last game going right now, but that game in Anaheim, I guess, is still in progress. Die with a foul out of play. Houston hanging on to a one to nothing lead up in Seattle, so that's another game that's underway. West Coast games, of course. Angels have runners at first and third. A couple of outs in the 12th inning. Jose Guillen at the plate. Arthur Rhodes, good fastball, getting the strikeout on three and two, or the uh, two and two count with the bases loaded. In the top half of the inning. And Dye goes, no, he didn't. He foul tipped it. Talking about long nights. Uh, it was on this day in 1980 that the Reds, with a combination of three rain delays and a four-run ninth, ended up in a 6-6 tie with the Padres. The game was finally called at 2.30 a.m. Hmm. Also get some pretty good rains in Cincinnati as well. Midwest has a weather, weather system all its own.
place you really get some severe weather changes is Chicago. 2-2. Two -two. And that's low ball three. At Wrigley Field at games that started out, it was 82 degrees, and you get those dark clouds moving in over Lake Michigan and the thunderstorms, and suddenly by the time they stop, it's 58 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Three and two, the count to die, leading off the bottom of the eighth inning. And that is ball four. Well, one way or another, die has been on base five times tonight. No matter. Single, a double, he forced a runner, reached on an error, and now he walks. And here is Scott Hatterberg. Driven in a pair of runs with a couple of base hits tonight. A's leading 10-6 here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And that is low. have a separate set of rules that applied to Wrigley Field with regard to weather in uh, ball games. You could not suspend the game because of rain, but you could suspend it because of darkness, mm -hmm. because of the no lights. Atterbury with a looping base hit into right field. And the ball is kicked around and right. Die is taken off for third and makes it. Pena in right field. Uh, a little trouble picking that ball up. And it's got Hatterberg another big night. Three hits for Hatterberg and good hustle by Jermaine Dye. Picked it up quickly as he saw Pena bobble the ball. Brad Fisher telling him to get down. And it should be a single E9 allowing JD to go to third base. Play by Larson at third to keep the ball from going past him. Well, here's Crosby with a chance to do some damage to the Reds. With Die at third now. Hatterberg at first, and the Reds bring the infield up. More or less right at the rim of the grass. Crosby takes, and that's the first strike. Yeah, you couldn't call a game, or you couldn't suspend a game because of rain, but. So in Chicago, no matter how hard it rained, <laughs> so well, it's also dark. So let's uh, suspend it, and uh, we can pick it up uh, tomorrow. And that's what uh, ultimately happened on more than one occasion at Wrigley Field. Tapper right to short. They get one at second on the first and a double play. And a big ouch right there. Well, it's a... a play that happened against the Minnesota Twins. Infield in. Okay. And at this point right here, I think Jermaine yeah, Dye should be running. I do too. I yeah, agree. I mean, that's... Force him to throw it on. Exactly. Home, Especially with the infield in, of course, probably told to make sure the ball goes through, but once you see they're going for two, get down the line far enough that once the commitment goes for a double play, they're going to take the two. The whole purpose of bringing the infield in is to cut off a run at the plate. So if Dye breaks for the plate, and even if the ball's sharply hit, you know, Dye has got to be tagged. If he wants to drag it out, he can stop to ensure that the runner will reach first base. And the runner at first might even get around to third, but at least you still end up with a runner at first and second. You've got a runner in scoring position. Miller looks at that one. Two balls, no strikes. At least in this game, the A's have a four-run lead in the game we're referred to. The tie game. He's not able to score and ultimately lost the game in extra innings. Fouled back by Miller, two and one. A's trying to grind it out here. Every time one team 
team scores, the other comes back. Two balls, one strike, two out. Nice catch. I used to say that a lot in New York. Steve Trout was pitching for the Yankees. <laughs> He's never anywhere around the plate. <laughs> Oh my God. That is ball four. Yeah, David Miller, I'm sure, was hoping to get a pitch that he could swing and, and possibly get another hit to drive in a run. That would have given him a career best six runs batted in. But at this point, he's going to have to settle for five, which has been an outstanding Second evening for him. Second baseman, Marco Futuro. So with runners at the corners, Matthews gets ready to face Marco Scudero, who also has a couple of hits tonight in this one. 10-6, Oakland leads. Two out, bottom of the eighth inning. Hit towards second base, and he did for the force at short to, or at second rather, to end the inning. We're going to the ninth. A's 10, Reds 6. A's carry a 10-6 lead into the top half of the ninth inning. Griffey family hanging in there. Junior due to hit next in this inning after Sean Casey, who will lead it off. Arthur Rhodes came on to get a big strikeout in the eighth inning. And he delivers. That's low for a ball, 1-0. Now well, that game in Seattle is over. In contrast to this one, there was only one run scored. And it was scored by the Houston Astros on a sacrifice fly. one nothing to win, and who do you think got it? Roger Clemens, 9-0. Does that mean he gets to go home after the game? Yeah, probably. He's not going <laughs> to pitch for a while. <laughs> but he's been unbelievable. Hey, listen. He's probably wondering why they didn't do that <laughs> long before this. One ball, one strike. And a shot down the right field line, and that's uh, headed for extra bases. Let's see, Burns making a throw into second. That's too late. And Casey opens the ninth with a two-bagger. Another shot, and hey, when Sean Casey gets into him, he breaks him. Oh, old fastball from Arthur Rhodes and hooked down in the corner. And Eric Burns played it well, but it kind of came back a little slowly. Strong throw to second, but Casey in easily. Well, here's Griffey with a runner at second. And Rhodes misses with that one. If he takes that, that misses. Ball two, two balls, no strikes. Casey, the runner at second base, the 2 0 to Griffey, and a strike. Against Arthur Rhodes, of course, when uh, Arthur was in the probably playing for Baltimore with Griffey faced him as a member of the Mariners. All strike two, two and two. Boy, he has painted the last two. Perfectly thrown strikes. Right on the corner and knee high. Now we'll see Griffey's approach with two strikes on him. Takes the high fastball. Well, I like that pitch selection. It, uh, it stayed right after him unintentionally up as high as it was, but Griffey swinging as he had done another time. Thing about a pitch like that, it can't be hit really. 
and but it's still tempting because the batter sees it's up. Well, Eric Chavez has been known to hit a few up in the zone <laughs> like that, but typically you don't see a lot of hitters making contact. Jimenez, the batter, and he takes outside as Griffey heads to the dugout. Ponders the evening. Done at second base. Or Casey, rather, at second base. And the count is two balls, no strikes. Now this for contrast in that Seattle game. Clemens now 9-0 and, oh, and Joel Pinheiro 1-8. Wow, that's unbelievable. They each have nine decisions uh, this year. A strike call. Jimenez doubled and scored a run his last time up. Hayes trying to put this one in the win column. And a strike. First seven games of this homestand, six of them have been won by the A's. The only loss was a game to Toronto. It was what, Friday night? Mm -hmm. And that was a close one for most of the game. 2-2 two -two pitch, stroked into right field and a base hit. Runner will be held at third. And the Reds kicking and screaming here in the ninth inning with runners at the corners. They've got 13 hits on their own here tonight. The batter designated here, Adam Dunn. And now Adam Dunn. So the A's have been forced to get to their bullpen up again as Justin Dutcher loosens. Six with that one. Pretty good idea to pump it up to Adam Dunn, who we have seen try to lift a few three times flying out to center field with the uppercut swing. Oh, and one. And he lays off that one, however. One ball, one strike. Reds have managed at least to get the tying run to the on deck circle. Does this make it a safe situation for Rose? It was actually last in. Because right. he came in with uh, run already in. And the base is loaded. And he misses with that pitch. Two and one. Hey, Arthur has been known to give you more of a thrill than you want sometimes in the latter stages of the game. Ball three. What you really want is a nice dull <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> one, two, three inning. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Gacy at third, Jimenez at first. Three balls, one strike to Adam Dunn. Popped it up. Jermon has got to play. Second out. Well, Arthur comes back to make the pitch he wanted there. Two down now in the ninth. The batter, Willie so that's going to leave it up to Willie Mo Pena to keep this game alive for the Cincinnati Reds. And Arthur has not really messed around this half inning, just throwing fastballs. Finished off Larson, the pinch hitter, in the eighth inning with fastballs, and pretty much has done the same in the first four batters here in the ninth. So Pena stands in. And Rhodes starts him out with a strike. And when you're throwing 95, why mess around? Just let it go. That's what he's doing. At least they've had hits. Mm -hmm. At least
Chase making them earn it. That one had a little something on it. All and two. And the Reds are down to their last strike. their feet at the Coliseum in anticipation of what they hope will be the final pitch of the ball game. And that's high and with uh, defensive indifference Jimenez walks to second base. So it will be not a stolen base. One two pitch. And a little looper, Hatterberg back of the bag, wins the race, ball game's over, and the A's win it. That ball had a little trouble written all over it with that spin coming off the bat, but the A's have made it seven out of eight on this uh, homestand as they continue a surge that they hope will uh, take them to uh, first place in the American League West. So the A's win it, 10 runs, 14 hits, no errors. The Cincinnati Reds, six runs, 13 hits. They had two errors. Barry Zito now evens his record at four and four, and Jun Kun Bong sees his record uh, now as 0 and 1 as he loses his first start for the uh, Cincinnati Reds. So a good victory for the A's tonight, keeping that uh, momentum going that they have built up here at home. Uh, they had been hoping to have a good home stand, starting the longest of the season, a 12-game home stand, and it's been a good one so far. And keep scoring a lot of runs, especially early in the game, as they have done now. That's a good way to get started. It helps the pitchers a lot to get the run support early in the game. And uh, we're going to be joined by Bobby Crosby, who has certainly played a, a big role in these two victories here by the Oakland Athletics tonight. Uh, Bobby, thanks for coming by and uh, keep swinging that hot bat. Thanks, I'm trying. Bobby, what's the, the difference? I know uh, Dave Hudgens has talked about with you using the opposite field, and it seems like you're going so well to the opposite field, you're getting pitches now to be able to pull the way you have the first two games of this series. You know, that's the way it works. I mean, uh, they've been working me out that way pretty much the whole uh, the whole year. So, I mean, I think once you start hitting the balls that way, that's when you get that pitch in you want. What it really, I guess, boils down to is that you're dictating now the terms of the at-bat rather than the pitcher. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, if you wait for your pitch and be patient up there, you're going to get a pitch to hit. So, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to lay off the bad pitches and wait for a you know pitch I could do something with. I mean, there's some talk about spreading out uh, with a couple of strikes. How much have you done that? And if so, how much has it helped you? It told me a lot. You know, that's what, that's what I'm doing now with two strikes, you know. Um, my strikeouts in the beginning, I thought, got up there got up there to a point where I needed to change. So, you know, I've been uh, choking up on the bat and, and uh, spreading out a little bit just to put the ball in play. Nice to see the uh, contributions continue to be spread out throughout the, the lineup. Uh, Hatterberg again tonight. Uh, Damian Miller as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, with Chavi out, you know, some of us got to step up, you know. I mean, his bat was, is, uh, is a big part of our team. So, I mean, now that he's gone, it's nice to see some of these other guys come and get some hits. I mean, what's it like for you to uh, face National League pitching? Of course, a little bit during spring training, but uh, now all of a sudden in regular season with the interleague play, uh, how are you enjoying facing National League pitching? <laughs> well, so, so far, not too bad. You know, hopefully I can uh, keep it going here, but, uh, you know, so far it's going okay. All right, Bobby, thanks so much for being with us and uh, keep up the good work. Thanks, good I appreciate it. Good okay. Job. Well, well, nice to be young, isn't it? Yeah. Nice to be I can't young remember and that strong far back. and, uh, you know, 55, 56 games he's playing every day, and just to see him mature as a major league hitter. I mean, he, he struggled a little bit at the beginning, but everybody knew he had the talent. His average is over 260, hitting the long ball, driving in runs. And just so young and so much talent. You know, and, so and you've really seen it in a relatively short time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't even reached the halfway point of the right. season, and uh, Bobby is coming on, and I think maybe a little faster than uh, people anticipate. Well, I think it shows, number one, that he knows how to play the game, and it takes hard work. And what Dave Hudgens has done with him, Ron Washington on the infield, we let him talk about his defense, which now, all of a sudden, he goes out and plays. Let's talk about his hitting, but his defense has been special. I mean, everything that he gets to, he's going to make the play. And so he's just playing a great game, and so are the A's. And the more you hear the name Crosby, the less you hear the name Tejada.
That's true. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> All right. We'll be back right after this. Second night in a row, the A's uh, score in double figures. And, uh, Ray, it wasn't that long ago that uh, people were saying <laughs> that uh, this ball club was going to scratch for runs, that uh, Hudson, Mulder, Zito, those guys were going to have to pitch uh, low-run ball games to win. Uh, and the A's are showing that's not quite the case. And, you know, the pitchers were kind of thinking the same way, uh, but they were pitching well. So now they get a little bit of breathing room. And I think what the A's have done the last uh, two of the last three games, Mark Redmond going five innings on Sunday, Barry Zito tonight, going just five innings as a starter. That means a bullpen has to come in and do the job. But I think it's really special that for the two pitchers, they get a win. Redmond did it on Sunday, Barry Zito tonight, going just five innings because they do pitch late in the game. A lot of times, as Barry has seen uh, two previous starts, 16 innings, just one run support tonight. He gets a whole bunch and able to hang on for five innings and get the win. Well, maybe it does even out well, after all. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. All right. Our next telecast will come tomorrow evening when the A's wrap up this series against the Reds. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. here on Fox Sports Net. Stay tuned for IMAX coming up next. Once again, the final score, the Oakland A's 10, the Cincinnati Reds 6. You've been watching exclusive coverage of Oakland Athletics Baseball on Fox Sports Net. I'm Hank Greenwald for Ray Fossey saying so long from the Coliseum in Oakland.